Hi guys, welcome back to the Shannon Show. Hello if you're new. So today's video is going to be a spoiler review of Wednesday season one. I hope everybody is doing as well as can be and I really do hope everybody is being as proactive as possible in supporting the Black Lives Matter movement and if you're still on the lookout for some resources I've linked some in the description. Feel free to comment down below your thoughts on my commentary. I'm always up for a chat, I'm always up for a debate and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you didn't give it a dislike no hard feelings and if you really really like this video consider subscribing and helping your girl Ah, So, Wednesday, season one, spoiler review. So when Netflix initially announced that there was going to be a live action Wednesday Addams series, I was here for it. I'm a big fan of the Addams Family movies in the 90s, especially the second one. The one with Debbie the Gold Digger and where Wednesday and her brother get sent off to the summer camp. Iconic movie. And I feel like the most iconic scene in that movie is when Wednesday's at the summer camp, they cast her as Pocahontas in their play and she reads the Pilgrims for Filth and she fucks shit up per period and as a child discovering that movie i feel like i definitely resonated with wednesday my childhood was not sunshine and rainbows and people would constantly be going out of their way to try me and one thing about child shannon is that she did not tolerate the disrespect and she was about her revenge so when i watched the movie i was like per and then on top of that her parents are supporting her with her revenge and they're filthy rich as well i was just like man i wish i was an adult so yeah i feel like a lot of children out here could relate to wednesday because the world is telling us that we need to be good little children and we must turn the other cheek and forgive like when really you're just like nah bitch let me give them worse energy than they gave me so for me instantly i'm an adam's family stan but anyway back to the actual wednesday adam's series tim burton was attached to it i love that i thought that was a perfect match he's known for his gothic aesthetic i've watched his charlie and the chocolate factory i watched the corpse bride i enjoyed those movies so i felt like this was a good match in terms of a director in the last year or so he has caught a bit of backlash because of some comments that he made when he was asked about his restricted color palette in my opinion what he said was very wild but am i surprised no but in this series you know we do have some brown people up in here we even have some black people up in here so you know maybe bullying works and speaking of the cast obviously wednesday adams is being played by jenna ortega when i first heard that i was like per this is perfect casting like we've got a latina wednesday per and it's jenna ortega big per uh, this was perfect casting i feel like jenna ortega has solidified herself as a scream queen every project that i've seen her in she slays she killed it in you she killed it in the babysitter killer queen she always comes correct and when i saw the poster it was chef's kiss we also have Catherine zeta jones as morticia i feel like there was a significant amount of people that didn't agree with that a lot of people felt like morticia should have been casted by a latina actress as well and i definitely hear that and then on top of that Catherine zeta jones has been like a serial latina fisher like she really don't give a fuck honey and you know what I gotta give it to the bitch because she fooled me. I was shocked to go on her Wikipedia and see that homegirl is Welsh. She really said if the check clears, she don't give a fuck. But I don't think Morticia ever was explicitly Latina though. She wasn't in the 90s. Whereas the father clearly was. And I don't think she is in this series either. But I'm not gonna lie, when I heard that casting, I personally was here for it. But I'd be interested to hear from you guys. Do you think Morticia should have been casted by a latina actress or somebody else what did you guys think about the casting for morticia and then the only other person that i knew was the principal obviously gwendolyn my homegirl from game of thrones again every single role that she plays in she slays and she's been everywhere she's been dipping it and doing it after game of thrones she's been booked and busy so per gwendolyn love that for you and then also we have christina ritchie coming back as well to play a different character so it's kind of like a full circle moment obviously she's not playing wednesday or morticia but it's still a full circle moment i think it would have been interesting to see christina as morticia but i do think again Catherine zeta was a better casting in my opinion but i gotta hear from you guys would you have been here for christina ritchie as morticia let me know what you think in terms of initial casting those are the only people that i knew to be excited about i wasn't really sure what to 
expect obviously we're in a whole different era now was this going to be ya centered i kind of assumed that it was going to be ya centered but what kind of style was it going to be was it going to be written in an adult type of way is it going to be written in you know the millennials version of gen z is it going to be you know realistic is there going to be supernatural elements we did see some supernatural elements in the 90s film but i feel like it was a lot more subtle so i was thinking is it going to be kind of the same as the 90s aesthetics last feel are they going to make it a riverdale sabrina type of thing that's what i was intrigued about but because tim burton was attached to it and he often does more kind of mature ish even though it's still gothic and ghouly it's still kind of mature centered so i'm thinking is that gonna be the the, the type of feel i was kind of interested to see what tim burton was going to do with the series which brings us onto the plot so after watching it i can say that it is sort of in the realm of sabrina slash riverdale more on the sabrina side more more on the sabrina side which i was kind of surprised about i thought it was going to be more in the realm of what we saw in the 90s but then again it is on netflix and then it kind of does make sense that it's sort of like sabrina but wednesday adam set at a high school wednesday has supernatural powers wednesday is sent off to this high school full of outcasts that has all of these supernatural creatures in it it's got vampires it's got werewolves it's got sirens for those of you who don't know what a siren is, I actually had to look it up because I was like, what the hell is a siren? And I guess it's like a amalgamation of a songbird and that they can manipulate you with the sound of their voice or the sound of their singing. They can manipulate you to do things for them. So I could be like, you know, pay my rent and then you'd pay my rent. You see what I mean? So yeah, this new school that she's at is full of all of these supernatural students. They all have their cliques. There's a popular girl. There's a popular boy. The school also has a long history with her family. And there's this monster on the loose near the school wreaking havoc. And it turns into this whole like mysterious investigation where Wednesday has to figure out who this monster is and how to stop it. Which is, you know, the typical storyline you see in these supernatural YA series. And I did enjoy it. But because I've seen stuff like this before on Riverdale, on Sabrina, and if I was to compare all the season ones together, I feel like Wednesday, even though it was enjoyable, it's at the bottom of the table. I feel like Riverdale season one was better. Sabrina season one was better. I feel like in terms of the storylines and the plot, it wasn't really a standout. It wasn't really like, I've never seen this before. Like, oh my God, you should watch this. It wasn't giving standout behavior. It was giving, we've seen it before. But now Wednesday Adams is in this scene it before universe. I feel like overall the storylines were decent, but I found them not to be as compelling as they should have been, especially in kind of like the sandwich episode. It was giving borderline background noise. Like it's one of those series where you'll find yourself wandering to your phone because the stuff is not really engaging. Whereas the, you know, other shows that I've watched, you know, Riverdale season one, I was glued to my screen. Sabrina season one, I was glued to my screen. That wasn't my experience in terms of what the plot lines were giving. A lot of it was very predictable. I found myself, you know, not concentrating all the time and having to go back because I missed a clue. So I feel like there's incentive to pay attention because there's clues scattered around each episode. Um, but honestly, you could have skipped a few clues and you still would know what's going on because it was that predictable and it felt like they kept coming back to the clue several times to remind you of the clue. It really wasn't like an engaging or a high investment who done it. For me, decent plot line, but it's not anything that you haven't seen before. In terms of the writing, I felt like the writing was solid, but again, I could tell that, you know, these aren't Gen Z writers. They're trying to be Gen Z Wednesday. And like, I'm looking it up, like, it's not even millennials writing this. This is literally Gen X, like 50, 55 year olds are writing this series. And it's just like, what is your shackle? What is your shackle? Like, fair enough. Okay, you want to direct. Okay, cool. Cool. But I don't know. Like, I just feel like I wouldn't be 50 years old writing a YA series. I just wouldn't be doing that. 
Is that just... Am I, am I ageist for saying that? I just feel like... I wouldn't want to be doing that. But then again, maybe the check... If the check clears. You know what? Actually, you know, if the check clears, like, if they're going to give me a decent amount of money, you know, maybe I would. Maybe I would, actually. But I just think it's time to pass on the mantelpiece now. It's time to pass it on. I felt like they did manage to get away with it, but you could still kind of tell, like, this is not written by a Gen Z person. This was written by an older person. And, yeah, it's something that I definitely want to see changing in the writing industry, personally. But overall, passable. Passable. But next season, I would like to see a younger writing team and I would like to see a bit more engaging engaging storytelling um because i feel like because i feel like the storyline was decent but again i feel like like sabrina like riverdale it will become repetitive and, I, and because season one wasn't like a standout or a mind-blowing season if the quality is the same going into season two People are going to lose investment, in my opinion. Because I think right now, it's definitely the nostalgia and it's definitely the star power that is going to take us into season two. But that alone is not going to sustain itself for season three or four, if they're hoping to get there. In terms of the style, they do a lot of things with contrast. So you see a lot of, you know, dark gothic stuff to, you know, represent Wednesday and the Adams family. And at times, it's contrasted with the colour of Nevermore, which is still kind of muted and dark. But, you know, it just seems more colourful compared to Wednesday Adams, who's always in black and white. I feel like in terms of aesthetics, they did that really well. In terms of the tone, like they wanted it to be this kind of bland, dry, sarcastic humour. Kind of of what we saw in the Adams family. But I feel like it was a bit more muted. And I feel like at times they tried too hard with it so that it didn't really land well like there were a few times where i was like you know it got a giggle out of me but it felt like you know the cool kid that is trying too hard to be cool at times it didn't really feel natural all the time like it did in the adam family films in the 90s i feel like maybe i would have liked a bit more campness because the adams family movies were a bit more camp so maybe that's what it needed because they still had the dark humour but they still had this campiness as well. We didn't really get much campiness in this series. So I feel like if we had a bit more balance of that, maybe the dark, kind, the dark bland, sarcastic humour would have hit a bit more. So in terms of the characters, I think overall the casting was done well for most characters. But I felt like overall character development was pretty non-existent this season maybe a bit for wednesday but not really much for anyone else in terms of assemble characters we have this kind of like nevermore versus pilgrim thing going on and i would have liked to see more female characters within the pilgrims because it seems like they were all boys i keep referring to the movie and i'm just gonna keep doing that but in the movie we had a lot more female antagonists when it came to like the pilgrim link so it would have been nice to get some kind of female villains within the whole Pilgrim versus Nevermore situation, in my opinion. And I would have liked a bit more rivalry, to be honest. You kind of just see the Pilgrims messing with them here and there. Um, but I definitely felt like the rivalry didn't feel as big as they made it seem on the show because we didn't really see much interaction with them. We saw interactions here and there, but I feel like the rivalry definitely was not as tense as it was made to seem on paper. So yeah, I definitely feel like that was a missed opportunity to build up tension. So we really feel this rivalry between the Nevermore kids and the Pilgrim kids. In terms of the individual characters, obviously Wednesday, Jenna Ortega, she did the damn thing. Like I've never seen her do a role bad. I feel like she personified Wednesday really well. But as I said, with the style and tone, I felt like she was limited with the script because like I was saying before, you know, sometimes in terms of the tone, this kind of, you know, sarcastic, uh, I don't have any feelings, I don't care about anything. It did feel a bit forced at times, but I don't think it was necessarily Jenna Ortega's characterization. I do think it was the limitations of the script 
and the direction as well. But overall, I felt like this was perfect casting for Wednesday. I felt like aside from the, the few issues that I had with kind of like the tone and the delivery, she did a phenomenal job as Wednesday. Then we have Bianca. We've got a black character up in here. She's supposedly main cast. And I say supposedly because I didn't really see as much of her as I would have liked for somebody who's supposedly on the main cast. I was hoping we were going to get more of a rivalry between Wednesday and Bianca. But it kind of just felt like Bianca was just talking shit about uh, behind Wednesday's back. And then we had this thing with the Poe games. And yeah, I just kind of feel like Bianca's character was just a very generic antagonist like the mean girl who's mean for a bit is jealous that you know some girl was dating her ex she does help out wednesday from time to time so i felt like that was kind of like a foreshadowing that they're probably going to be friends later down the line and then something happens and she turns a new leaf and she wants to be nice and then she ends up being wednesday's friend and helping her out i feel like everything happened like really fast and there were like bits where she was just missing from the episodes and then she'd come back and now she's you know at this different life stage in her life so i kind of felt like it was giving supporting like i feel like at the end she was just kind of just used to help save the day and that was the only use of her character she didn't really feel like a fully fledged character it was definitely given like you want a black character okay we're gonna give you one so yeah in my opinion bianca was severely underdeveloped there was so much that could have been done with her this season and it seemed like they really just couldn't be bothered considering who the director is considering this is an all-white writing team the tale is old as time they include the black character to be inclusive but ultimately they don't care enough to make them a fully developed character so the only thing i can hope for is for better development for bianca season two maybe a more diverse writing room season two maybe maybe next up we have principal weens again Gwendolyn slayed it she really sold it as this principal that was so concerned about the image of nevermore i was really suspicious of her i thought for the longest time that she was involved in this whole beast mystery thing at first i thought she was the beast and then i thought that she was the master of the beast um but homegirl was really down for nevermore she was really down for the cause she died for nevermore basically so yeah, big up Principal Wee. Yeah, I feel like Gwendolyn did a spectacular job as the principal. Then we have Mrs. Thornhill, Christina Ritchie's character. And from the beginning, I was suspicious of her character because I was like a normie teacher coming to the school because she wants to like fit in. Like, bitch, I don't fucking buy it. And because she was Wednesday Adams, like I felt like that was just a clue before that she's going to be a devious character at the very least. Um, at first, I thought that Laura was going to be the therapist. But after the therapist got killed, my theory went back to it being the principal. But then when it got revealed to be Mrs. Thornhill, I was like, of course it is fucking her. And you know what? I was actually watching an episode with my sister. And as soon as she came on screen, she was like, she's the bad guy. I was suspicious of Miss Thornhill. But I feel like it might be a it might have been a surprise to some people that Thornhill turned out to be, you know, the bad guy. But I'd be interested to hear from you guys. Were you surprised or were you not? Matisha and Gomez, I love them. I love them. Louise and Catherine did a really good job personifying those characters. Gomez being so in love with Morticia. Morticia being this vain housewife. I think Catherine Z are really slayed. I would have loved to see more of the Adams family as a whole. And we do dive into Morticia and Gomez's history at Nevermore. And after seeing that, I would actually be here for a spin-off with a young Morticia and a young Gomez and their time at Nevermore. I would be here for I would be here for that. I'd be interested to hear from you guys if you would be here for a spin-off with a young Morticia and a young Gomez meeting for the first time at Nevermore. Let me know. Uncle Fester does show up as well. He's been played by Fred Armenstein. I hadn't heard of him before, but I do know there was a bit of controversy with his casting because people are saying that he's an abuser because of some allegations against him. I did read up on the allegations and nobody explicitly called him an abuser, but they might as well have. I was reading his Wikipedia and this line by his ex-wife Elizabeth Moth stuck with me. She said, and I quote, he's so great at doing impersonations but the greatest impersonation he does is that of a normal person. 
Do you know how wild that statement is? How can somebody say your greatest impression is of a normal person? Anyway, he did address it and he basically says that, yeah, he was a shitty boyfriend. But some people were upset that he was casted. But he was casted. I did watch the show. And I feel like he did a great Uncle Fester. But he wasn't in the show very long. He was, I think it was pretty much one episode. Then we have Enid, Wednesday's roommate and later friend and i loved her she was such a light in this series she was so sweet she was so wholesome adorable i really appreciated her determination to be friends with wednesday and i love that she now has this friendship with wednesday and i also love that she finally managed to wolf out period because her mum was trying to play with her trying to send her to these conversion camps honey mm -mm. yeah emma myers she did that perfect casting there's also a character called eugene i believe he's a supporting character I really loved him. I loved him and Wednesday's friendship. I feel like they should have had a bit more screen time together. I feel like there was other characters whose screen time could have been trimmed down to allow more for Eugene. I feel like he kind of reminds me of Joel from the Adams Family second movie. He kind of gives those vibes. Very wholesome character. He did that with the bees. Again, perfect casting. Then we have Tyler. I didn't really care for Tyler to be honest and I knew he was full of shit I felt like the good boy act that he was trying to do was like not genuine so when he turned out to be the villain I wasn't surprised and then there's Xavier Nevermore's most eligible bachelor the hot boy the sad boy I didn't really care for him much either to be honest I feel like overall in a, I feel like overall as an assembled cast I would say there was a lot of times where chemistry was missing like there'd be chemistry between some characters but a lot of the time not so much i feel like there was chemistry between the adams family but within the school i would say there was less chemistry within that environment within a lot of the relationships more chemistry building is needed for season two so next thing I want to talk about is the love interest because is it a YA theory without some love interests? Unfortunately this series did not pass the Betchel test. I'm only going to talk about the love interest concerning Wednesday because there is a thing going on between Bianca and Xavier but it really wasn't anything to talk about to be honest. Like nothing much happened. There were exes. But yeah, me personally I did not see Gen Z Wednesday thirsting after men. I did not see that. I kind of felt like she would be asexual, to be honest. If anything, lesbian. I didn't think she would be. She would be a hetero girly. But then again, this series is written by 50-year-olds. And I checked. They're 50-year-old men and one woman. So now it's all kind of making sense that they forced these dry romances on us. She had more chemistry with the hand. She had more chemistry with Thing than these boys. So first up we have Tyler and like I said Tyler gave me bad vibes from the beginning but even like Tyler and Wednesday's romance I just could not ship it because Tyler was just very forceful. Wednesday clearly was not ready to explore you know romantic relations and he just kept doing stuff like oh well I thought you liked me and like oh you're giving me mixed messages like how did she do that she was literally just there talking to you being friendly ish and you just took that as oh you're giving me mixed messages so instantly I was like red flag central homegirl can't sit and get a coffee like that sexual to you like what so for me personally wednesday and tyler's relationship lacked chemistry i feel like her and xavier had a bit more chemistry but still not much there it was just giving sad for me xavier he wasn't selling me like oh my god wednesday you should definitely get with this guy i wasn't sold personally i personally feel like wednesday had more chemistry with Enid, and she had more chemistry with eugene I felt like if anything, if she was going to be in a heterosexual relationship, it would be with Eugene. Kind of mirroring the 90s movie. She gets with the nerdy dork, but you know, Eugene was thirsting over Enid. And I was just like, why is Eugene thirsting over Enid? I mean, you know, Enid, she's that girl, period. But like, I felt like we should have seen Wednesday and Eugene get together. And maybe they might. But I feel like they're prepping us for Xavier and Wednesday next season. But I personally would be here 
for Wednesday and Eugene because at least they had chemistry. At least they had chemistry. But yeah, I'd be interested to hear from you. Who are you shipping this season? Because, I mean, Enid and her man is cute, but again, I'm not really seeing chemistry there, personally. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of feel like next season, personally, I would want Eugene and Wednesday to get together. If Wednesday has to have a man, personally, I don't think she needs one. But if she was to have a man, I think it should be Eugene. Or they should cast somebody to last after. Because I'm sorry, I'm sorry, personally, you know... Xavier and Tyler, it wasn't giving last for me personally. It wasn't giving last. You know, Sabrina, we had Harvey, we had Nick, like, you know, we ain't got that. We ain't got that. <laughs> you know, in terms of, you know, the miss and send, the costume set design, etc., I felt like they did a good job. I felt like they really sold me the world of Nevermore. They sold me Pilgrim World. The aesthetic was very clean. The CGI could do with a little work though. I feel like with the CGI, a lot sometimes it felt cartoony. Um, like you know, the the high creature looked very funny, in my opinion. At some points, it looked really funny. It looked like I forgot. Is it is it a Looney Tune character, the Tasmanian Devil? I don't know. It looked like a cartoon at some point, and it looked a bit funny. So yeah, I feel like the CGI definitely could have used with some work. Um, I felt like hair and makeup, pretty decent, except for Bianca's contacts. Bianca's contacts needs to be changed because it was giving Halloween. It was very distracting. And I felt like for a siren who's meant to be manipulative and, you know, seducive and stuff like that, those contacts were distracting. If she's gonna have, if she's got to have blue eyes, okay, cool, but... There are so many realistic blue coloured contacts on the market that don't make you look scary, like, you know? So yeah, those con Bianca's contacts needs to go. We need a new supplier. We need a new supplier because her contacts were very distracting. You know, the cinematography was really good as well. The lighting was really good, you know, portraying the gloom and the doom really well. Um, I like this kind of shallow beauty shots that they did with Morticia. In terms of the music, I like that they kept it score-based. There was very limited music soundtrack, which a lot of these YA series rely on. So I feel like in terms of how it sets itself apart, it's very score-based. So sometimes I kind of feel like music soundtracks can be a bit unnecessary and I feel like sometimes a lot of the time they use it to compensate for weaknesses in their series. In terms of predictions for next season I can't say for sure but I can assume Nevermore's gonna open up again, Wednesday's gonna come back and there's gonna be a new mystery to solve and that's gonna be you know the plot of every series until it ends. That's what I'm kind of suspecting. They kind of allude to the fact that we might see Tyler again. We might see Mrs. Thornhill again. And that they could actually be a small part of a bigger plot. So maybe we'll find out more about this bigger plot next season. Those are my predictions for next season. And possibly Wednesday and Xavier getting together. I feel like... That it would that will be a predictable thing that happens like Wednesday and Xavier get together. But but personally, I'm shipping her and Eugene, or Enid. I'm not sure if you'll get Enid. I doubt it. So yeah, Eugene. So yeah, overall, I would say it was a decent first season. But I definitely feel like they need to do more to ensure its longevity. I feel like it will get a season two. Its star power and nostalgia is going to be enough to draw people in to watch the series. And you will get a season two. But for me, the question mark is longevity. I definitely feel like perhaps they need to shuffle around their writing team. I personally think that they should invite younger writers. They need to invite writers of colour. And we definitely need more female writers. There was only one female writer this season, considering that the protagonist is a teenage girl. That is a bit of a question mark. And I feel like that kind of makes sense now. Why, you know, some parts were a bit stiff. So yeah, we definitely need more female writers in the room 
minimum. I feel like as a franchise, this definitely has potential, but we do need some improvements for season two. Overall, I felt like it was a decent watch. I would recommend it if you're into stuff like Riverdale, Sabrina. Overall, I would rate it a three out of five. And if I was rating it on Rotten Tomatoes, I'd give it a 70% out of 100. I'm interested to know what you would rate it. And yeah, that's the end of my review. Do let me know what your thoughts were on the series. Did it live up to your expectations? Were you underwhelmed? Were you disappointed? Did you think it was just average? I'd be interested to hear from you guys. As always, let me know what you thought about my commentary. In terms of what's next on The Shannon Show, I'll be doing a reaction to Lady Chattering's Lover. I might do a review for that as well. And I'll be releasing some of my Patreon reactions on YouTube, including my Love is Blind season two reactions and my reaction to, to the Elizabeth Holmes HBO documentary on the whole Theranos scamming business. Stay tuned for that. And if there's any similar shows that you want me to review or to react to, you can send me direct requests on my Patreon. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you have, don't forget to put my notification bell on so you know my next video is dropping. I'm also trying to get to 4.5K subscribers. That's my next short term goal. And I'd appreciate if you helped me hit that. And thank you to everybody who subscribed to my YouTube channel so far and thank you to everybody who's taken the extra step to sign up to my patreon it really means a lot to me till next time guys bye